It's been like this for months. Public sector strikes on a scale not seen for decades. Hurting our hospitals, schools, railways, airports. Today, the Prime Minister finally trying to call them off, with an up to 7% pay offer for millions of workers. I can confirm today that we are accepting the headline recommendations of the pay review bodies in full. But we will not fund them by borrowing more or increasing your taxes. It would not be right to increase taxes on everyone to pay some people more. An estimated £5 billion pay rise for millions, paid for through existing departmental budgets and an increase in the levy migrants pay for NHS access. Today's offer is final. There will be no more talks on pay and no amount of strikes will change our decision. The PM walking away with a quick win as teaching unions told members to accept the offer and call off autumn strikes. Our members have won this 6.5 and won this 900 million and won these movements on workload that the Prime Minister has signed up for. That's why I think members should now bank the success that they've, they've made. In saying that this is value to you, but actually you brought in an anecdote, haven't you? The government promising that extra money for pay won't come out of schools' budgets, which unions say are already underwater. Still, after making uh, cuts and looking at everything um, very, very closely, uh, we are kind of just in line, uh, maybe slightly below, depending on actually how the funds are allocated. Uh, so to be honest, until I actually see the, the revenue come in, I'm very, very sceptical. Junior doctors who've just begun a five-day strike, rejecting the offer outright. This is a, another offer that has been imposed on us without our consent, without our negotiated agreement, and it just goes to show how out of touch the government is. When Rishi Sunak says they're not going to talk, and no matter how much we strike, I think we're going to see in the future, really, if that statement holds up to truth. After months of rows over pay, the Prime Minister has accepted the pay review body recommendations, all too aware that failure to do so would have prompted a wave of industrial action and public anger directed at a government already 20-plus points behind in the polls. This pay deal is further than he initially wanted to go, but I'm told that the Prime Minister is hopeful that unions will meet him halfway. But already the signs are that strikes will continue in some sectors, while the PM is also now facing questions about where cuts will fall to pay for it all. Mr Sunak will hope ending school strikes will endear him to some voters, but he's far from drawing a line under the strikes damaging the country. Mr Sunak has announced public sector pay rises for millions of workers of at least 6%. When making decisions on pay as your Prime Minister, I have a responsibility to be fair. I can confirm today that we are accepting the headline recommendations of the pay review bodies in full. Public sector workers such as the police, prison officers, junior doctors and teachers are to see their pay increase from between 6% to 7%, whereas members of the armed forces are to see their pay increase by 5% with a £1,000 bonus. Sunak stated in his press conference that these pay rises will not be funded by further taxpayer money, but rather from each department slashing their budgets after ministers refuse to release more cash. It would not be right to increase taxes on everyone to pay some people more, particularly when household budgets are so tight. Neither would it be right to pay for them by higher borrowing, because higher borrowing simply makes inflation worse. Instead, because we only have a fixed pot of money to spend from, that means government departments have had to find savings and efficiencies elsewhere in order to prioritise paying public sector workers more. The decision comes on the same day junior doctors began their first of what is due to be five consecutive days of strike action. All public sector workers, including NHS workers, are absolutely exhausted after years of chronic underfunding of public services. You know, junior doctors have to face the pressures that the NHS are under every single day. You know, the waiting lists for elective procedures are nearly topping up to seven and a half million people. You know, this is completely unacceptable. The government needs to address this ongoing issue both in terms of chronic underfunding but, and, but underpaying staff, which is leading to a retention crisis. 
the public sector pay rises will be backdated to April and come after months of strike action and negotiations from unions across multiple sectors. The teachers' union announced they would be stopping all planned strikes after the 6% and £1,250 bonus offer was put on the table. All teaching unions have just announced that they're suspending all planned strikes immediately. Teachers will return to the classroom. Disruption to our children's education will end and the unions have themselves confirmed that this pay offer is properly funded. And so they're recommending to their members an end to the entire dispute. Sunak, however, sent a clear message to members of other groups that these pay rise offers were final and there'll be no further talks. Today's offer is final. There will be no more talks on pay. We will not negotiate again on this year's settlements and no amount of strikes will change our decision. Instead, the settlement we've reached today gives us a fair way to end the strikes, a fair deal for workers and a fair deal for the British taxpayer. Thank you. Please join the conversation. Put your comments and suggestions below in the comment section. Thank you for subscribing to this news channel. You will be notified of any breaking news and new post as you become part and parcel of the TAO Media family. Please like and share TAO Media. We love you all. Please support TAO Media Foundation by joining membership and visiting Amazon UK to purchase the displayed books to aid our orphanage projects across Africa.